Hi, this is Reverend Nikki Golden with Reverend Mindy Tucker, and we are here with Larissa Dion. She is the Director of Operations at the Wilson Center, plus she's one of the Unity of Wilmington's favorite singers. She has an amazing gift for creativity, and so part of what we'll be talking about today is creativity in the midst of a health crisis. What can we do? Because creativity raises our vibration and helps us to stay in that place where we can just float through whatever is happening with pure joy. It's perfect because today's daily word is comfort. I am enfolded in the comforting love of God. The first sentence is, whenever I feel lost, disheartened, or upset, I pause and close my eyes and breathe deeply. And I believe that when we close our eyes and center ourselves and breathe deeply, we're actually tuning in to that genius that lays within us and we're asking our genius to wake up and comfort us in a way that's uplifting. So, you know, we all have a genius. Yeah, part of my genius is accounting and we're not here to talk about that today. <laughs> That's a part of my genius too. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is not part of my genius. Not part of Nikki's genius. But, but you know, it's like if, if I were to tune into my own creativity, it'd be like, what can I do differently with church finance today or something like that? But for you, this is my layer is I imagine that when you tune in to your place of centeredness and calm and comfort, your soothing, you know, yeah. is different. Yeah, I, it's really interesting you said that about breathing deeply with your eyes closed. I actually have a song lyric, one of the first songs I produced, um, where the lyric is, breathe deeply, eyes closed, head down, let it flow, which is mm. cut a very magical phrase. Of course I'm thinking. <laughs> no, I I'm mean, an airplane right before you <laughs> um, head down. Okay. It was a song about Persephone and uh, and actually had been thinking a lot about spending time in nature and spending time in this sort of underground, which is where we all are. And I thought, well, how could Persephone do this? You know, every spring be in this be with all of her friends and all of the flowers and plants and then have to go back down into this intense hibernation. And I think the head down is just, for me, was just an acknowledgement of keeping keeping your head down in, in sort of humility and saying, well, this is where I am. And so instead of fighting it, why not just let that that state or that, that season just be what it is? Um, and that's hard for those of us who are creative and busy because we are really keeping our heads down right now. It's sort of changed our industry. So um, what I'm hearing is a way for you to not resist what is in life. Yeah. It's just to bow my head in acknowledgement that it's happening. Yeah. I think uh, human beings are so resilient and we want to push through, you know, with our, with our chin out, like, let's do it, you know, let's go. And I, there's something beautiful about this time. And, it, and it's very... Um, I don't think it's a coincidence that we're seeing Mother Nature and the Earth blooming and really we're spectators to it right now because usually it's happening all around us and we don't acknowledge it. So we're really saying, oh, like, yes, okay, I will follow your divine wisdom and take this time to bloom myself, you know. So that's beautiful. Yeah, it's been a it's been an interesting time. And what what's one of the ways that you are allowing yourself to bloom? Because allowing is very different than pushing. Yes. Right. Yes. And I well, you know, I normally am a push kind of person. Right. Um, I've allowed myself to maybe not do the things I think I should be doing right now. Like um, that. Obviously, doing my job, but even in doing my job, I've allowed myself more room to think creatively because I have to, we don't have shows, you know, so what else can we do to engage um, with each other and with our community? And so for me personally, I, I started painting again. It's been like 17 years since I picked up a paintbrush and it was something my grandfather and I did. And he is a home buddy. He watches the History Channel. He's very good at this kind of um, at this point in his life, this kind of thing. And so I've just thought, wow, okay, 
when I'm feeling a little stressed or like I need to go do something, I take out my paintbrush and without judgment, just start painting. And there have been times where I've had to hold my judgment back, like, that, what is that painting? You know, but just allowing unusual forms of creativity, or baking or things that I think, gosh, if I had more time, I would do and what stopped me from doing it before. And I, it's just, the, it is allowance, just letting yourself try it without any, you know, whatever the outcome. Be right. Oh, so no expectations. No expectations. And complete yeah. acceptance of whatever yes. yeah. blooms. Right, which has been very joyful to not worry about how it's gonna turn out. It's I've actually found the process to be joyful, which is, very new sensation for me. Oh, well, <laughs> it's letting go of control. Yes, <laughs> for one thing. I mean, we do have things that we have control over. Yeah. And we would like to have control over the rest of the universe, <laughs> but we don't. So what if we just allowed our inner creativity or those inner urges to emerge mm -hmm. without judgment? Because mm -hmm. that's the other thing. Well that's not good enough or nobody's ever going to see that or yeah. <laughs> that was a cooking disaster. <laughs> yeah. But all those, what we label disasters actually lead to the masterpiece yeah. because yeah. we have allowed them to come through us and we've engaged in a practice so that the next thing may be the most beautiful thing we've ever made. Yeah. I experienced that when I was throwing clay on the wheel is sometimes it would just collapse. But all of a sudden, something wouldn't collapse, and I would throw it, and I would be very centered, and what I came out with was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. It was exciting. <laughs> mm. that's, like, exciting. Just, that's delicious. It, it yes. is. Yeah. And not being afraid to share the process. I think um, I personally like to put out products that are finished, and so I've shared, you know, we baked bagels the other day, and I went, I'm just going to share each photo of where we are and the bagels looked, you know, They're their own beautiful. kind of thing. But it was, I think that's a part of it too, is is just sharing, I'm in process. And, and this is what it looks like. You know, we think about how to get to one point in your life to another. And a lot of what we don't have time to talk about is what happens on the way there, you know, even as simple as sketching something and you might feel like oh that sketch is beautiful and then you start painting it which happened to me my first painting and you go oh what am i doing but sharing that yeah. has also helped me remove judgment because each time i shared the feedback that i got was keep going this is great you know i wanted to send my first painting in 17 years to my grandmother and she said I, that's very beautiful i want you to keep it so that you have a reminder of the other ways your creativity can express itself. Mm -hmm. And that was like, how beautiful to give myself, and then I felt like I was giving myself a gift. Yeah. You know, I went, this is my painting. <laughs> That's yeah. very cool. That's beautiful. And then we talk a lot about authenticity these days, mm -hmm. but we want our authentic self to be wrapped up in this beautiful paper with this lovely bow. But the truth is, as we are unfolding our creativity, it doesn't always look beautiful. It sometimes gets really messy. Mm -hmm. And yet when we're willing to share that, it, I think it encourages other people to be very messy too and to let it flow out, but eventually we'll come up with the masterpiece. Well, I, yeah. that can also be applied to relationships. Yes. You know, are you willing to let your relationship get messy? Yeah. <laughs> before you can you know you're actually allowing the dross Myrtle Fillmore the co-founder of Unity would call the dross that sludge that floats up to the top when you're mm -hmm. smelting or trying to purify gold or whatever you're trying to do but ha allowing our relationships to get messy so that dross can get skimmed off and we can have cleared our space Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is between us and if we're clearing the messy then I'm more available yeah. in my authentic nature to have a relationship that's vibrant and alive yeah I actually 
experienced that with a, um, a good friend of mine who always calls me and leaves the most wonderful messages. And it's like, that should be the phone call I want to pick up. But of course, when we're working and we're busy, sometimes even having a conversation you want to have feels overwhelming, but I never said it. I would just say, oh, I'm busy. And I finally called back, I left a message and said, I'm so sorry. It's taken me three days and I have not been that busy. I actually have a deep fear of calling back and taking the time to connect in that way. And I don't know how to break through that, but here I am leaving you a message, you know, to say, thank you for calling. And, and then she said, oh my goodness, I never knew, you know, so this part of our relationship that was unspoken could come out in a way where we understood each other better. Mm -hmm. And and then we had a, an hour long conversation over the weekend and it was tremendously beautiful because there was no expectation. I just realized when the phone rang, I could accept it and then engage. It didn't but have to be a thing. Me. Yes. to me see. You had to be yeah. in a place where you could be open and authentic and vulnerable. Yeah, to even recognize that. And that messiness of the discomfort of telling the truth. Yeah. Opened yeah. up a deeper relationship, I'm imagining, with your friend. Absolutely. I mean, I think we allow ourselves to use terminology like, I'm overwhelmed, I'm busy. I mean, I am guilty of saying that a lot. But what's behind it, you know, I'm starting to realize if everything isn't there and I'm not busy, what what triggers the discomfort? And some of it is not wanting to be seen or being afraid that I won't say the right thing or I won't be authentic enough. That has been, you know, authenticity has been at the forefront because I think it's this ideal that we try to reach for mm -hmm. when really it's just, you know, I didn't wash my hair today. That's where I am today, you know, or what, you know, I'm wearing the same leggings I wore for the past three days. And that's very authentic, you know, that's yeah. just where well, you are. I didn't put makeup on today. Yeah. <laughs> or it's the feeling we're having, oh, I'm scared. Yeah. Because so many times relationships feel like there's a distance because we haven't shared a truth. And most mm -hmm. often in relationships, it's not a big truth. It's a little truth. I was afraid of what you would think when I said blank. Or I was scared because I'm not liking myself so much today that because I'm not liking myself, you're not going to like me. Yeah, so yeah. those little things, which sometimes for us feel really big, but they're really smaller than we think they are most often. Yeah. And the moment we say them, it clears the path and it reduces the separation. It builds the bridge. Yeah, it does actually. Something my husband, Christian, said when this all started, he said, you know, let's do a thing where we share a movie with each other the other one hasn't seen. And I said, okay, yeah, that sounds fun. He said, you got, wait, how long have you been together? We've been together for, we'll be six years in May. Okay, so there's still movies you There's, yeah, tons yeah, of movies. And a lot of me being like, I don't really want to watch that movie. You know, for, and I started to understand why. It wasn't that I didn't want to watch the movie. It was the this little thing that he put out there, but our phones have to be in another room. And I went, oh, I don't know if I can do that. Ooh. And the first night, it, it was a movie that I chose, so I was excited, you know, to, for him to see it. And it was fine, and then when he showed his movie, I had met this sort of discomfort of, oh, we're gonna watch a two hour movie, and I don't have my phone with my husband, right, who I spend time with. And, and like, and I really like a lot. <laughs> and you know, halfway through the movie, we're sitting across from the couch um, from each other, and we just start holding hands. And I, I thought, wow, I was afraid of that because if I had my phone, could I hold his hand? No, it was just it. It would create a barrier. And so, we've done this now for the past three, four weeks. And you know, we do a movie maybe a few nights apart, but. It's been really nice to say, and it's opened up this whole world of intimacy in our relationship that isn't just what other people see. It's really, you know, what we see in each other and how we connect with each other. And when the movie is over the first couple of weeks, I ran to my phone, you know, so <laughs> I'm, I'm giving myself grace for not being perfectly yeah. aligned. Right. But you were, you didn't have your phone, even if you ran to it instantly, yeah. you kept the agreement and agreements yeah. kept agreements 
build trust and relationship. Yeah. And it's a message. I want to be with you more than I want to be with my phone. Yeah. That's a that's often unspoken by behavior, but it's heard by the heart. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's been beautiful. I encourage everyone to try it with your whoever you're spending this this time, this pause with to put that little challenge in there because it's really it's been so worth it mm -hmm. to get to know each other in a different way and and we're being more mindful what kind of mood are we in what do we want to watch what do i want to show you you know mm -hmm. so it's just been um that's been really beautiful i'm sitting here celebrating the different expression of creativity because what i mean we think of creativity well now i'm going to sing you a song now i'm going to paint right. a painting or i'm going to bake but having a new idea mm -hmm. or a different idea is creativity yeah mm -hmm. Absolutely. and giving and receiving of that idea. I would like to share this part of me with you yeah. and then having you open it uh, and receptive to me sharing it with you. So this beautiful circulation of who I am and, and giving and receiving is open there. Yeah, I mean, that's how creativity is born, by giving and receiving. It's mm -hmm. the simple exchange between human beings that is a a contract of trust. I trust you with my inmost self and vice versa. And then things are born of that, you know, mm -hmm. and that's, I, I think a lot of times we want to sit down and say, I need to be creative, but it's not, it's an active state of being. It's not like a thing you can do. You just, well, we're back to products, packaging them yeah, up with yeah. a bow and making them perfect. Yeah. And seeing, I think, all kinds of people, you know, who might not be artists by trade, sharing little videos of their creativity or mm -hmm. what they're working on. Seeing all my friends who have kids building new rides for their kids at home, you know, I, it's it's a really beautiful exchange, and that is creativity. Yes. that ingenuity of of new ideas. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and what a beautiful way to share ourselves with each other in this time where we it's called social connecting. But we're really being asked to physically disconnect, to mm -hmm. put space between us in terms of physically, but our hearts are always going to be connected. Yeah. And, and what a beautiful, concrete way to show that connection by sharing those photographs, those, those visuals. Like I saw your beautiful cupcakes on Facebook. Oh, yes. I the saw your bagels. <laughs> I've seen some of the lullaby things that you and Christian yeah. have been doing. They're beautiful. All of those ways are ways that we can bring our hearts back into the knowingness of the connection, even in the midst of the physical space that we're putting. Mm -hmm. A way to care for ourselves, a way to care for each other, and a way to see how we really are connected in the field. Mm -hmm. It comes back to comfort. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It comes back to, I think, what we need most is that sense of I belong somewhere. Mm -hmm. And not only do I belong somewhere, but somebody wants to know who I am. Yeah, that's been a, oh, I cried about this the other day when I thought about all the friends I'm missing and the shows that have been canceled. And I, I realized that I had finally really fit in somewhere. And, you know, after years of, trying to figure out what that meant moving around all the time and as I have been meeting new people through creative friends who are now home and we're all creating these networks together I had this fear of what if I don't fit in what if they don't like me or what you know all of those old sort of um, those false evidence appearing real popping mm -hmm. around the brain and I I thought well what if I just keep doing what I'm doing what if I just don't put a product together and meet that new internet pen pal or that new creative person that I'm trying to connect with through my current network. And, and the fear came up and it came out in emotion. And I realized part of it was uh, the parts of myself that I don't like or that I don't make time for. That was really my fear was that they would see how I felt about myself. And it was wild to kind of let that go. And then the interaction just felt so much more connected because 
I decided to like myself and, and like whatever this iteration is now, you know, it was mm -hmm. a very cool feeling. And I could feel my friends and other people doing the same thing where mm -hmm. they're like, well, this is this me. Is, this is me. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Yeah. Because in a way it does feel like there's more, um, there's more laid bare. Yes. We don't have the, you know, the things we normally hide behind. So it's just, it just is what it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. The word I was thinking was artifice. Yes. Yeah. 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 And Brene Brown talks about get up close. You know, get up close to people and you'll see them, mm -hmm. really see them. But there's a, there's a reaction or a response is really a better word for that. They also see us. And I think that one of the biggest longings in everybody's heart is to be seen and to be to be able to see and to be seen and then the level of acceptance and belongingness that goes with that. But it takes an amount of vulnerability to be able to to um, be willing to be seen. Yeah, yeah, it is a very vulnerable state mm -hmm. to be in, for sure. But we have all the courage that we will ever need. It's already yes. in our heart. Yeah. Core, core is the heart. Mm -hmm. We got it. We do. We got it. We got this. And the beauty, the absolute beauty of each person when we're willing to look for it, and the absolute beauty that can shine forth from us when we're willing to allow it. Mm. So let's practice the law of allowing. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And thank you for being with us. If you'd like to leave a comment, please do. We'd love to look at them. We'll do our best to get on and respond. And uh, if you've been touched, moved, or inspired, share this on your own Facebook page. Share it with somebody and practice your creativity. One of the best things about creativity is when we're having an emotional experience, whether it's joy or anger, whether it's that feeling about being really cooped up someplace because that's our perception of what's happening. When we channel that energy into creativity, it has a way to move. So emotion is really the desire for the energy to move because emotion comes from the root word to motivate, which means to move. So when we let it move through us, then we can navigate the experience without having to suppress or stuff it. So have some fun with your creativity. And if you want to post some pictures I was going to say, uh, post a picture of your creativity, your cookies or your Scooby Snacks or your art. Or if you can just imagine the vibration between two people. <laughs> Here's our creativity. <laughs> Yeah, but have the best time doing it. You are loved beyond measure. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, right place, right time.